Is this the end of the BBC? Welcome to Mark and Pete Live. I'm Pete the Clergyman. With me, as ever, is Mark the Businessman. Now then, Mark, what have you got about to say about this? The end of the BBC? Really? Yes, it's all about a broadcasting change. Now, mm. the Cultural Secretary of the United Kingdom, Nadine Doris, has confirmed that the BBC licence fee is to be frozen at £159 for the next two years. But that's not the main part of the story, despite the fact that that was really her main address. What it really highlights is that the license fee that really covers both TV, radio and website, podcasts, iPlayers and apps is only just a factor that the existence of the BBC is only guaranteed to the December 2027. Yes, this is the BBC's Royal Charter. But what does it actually mean for the long term? What does it mean for all of those that have loved the British Broadcasting Corporation? Are we now seeing a programme of change? If the licence fee should cease to be, what will happen to the BBC? For you and me, we'll wait and see, and maybe just watch a blank TV. Clergyman Pete, I ask you, what do you think is the future of the BBC? Well, it is looking as though there are going to be moves to remove the licence fee, and that will change the nature of the BBC. Um, the fact that it has a licence fee paying for its, its existence does two things. One, it, it's not under taxation, so it's not under government control. Well, that's good. Uh, it's independent in that sense. Uh, but because it's got so much money coming in and it's sort of free to do what it wants within the uh, within its charter well we'll come back to that in a minute it has a particular charter an agreement that it will be the um, public service broadcaster well it has plenty of money it's end ended up being spending a lot of that money chunks of that money on very large salaries on ferrying people around in uh, in limousines this sort of thing it's uh, got too big for its boots. And so what it's going to have to uh, cut back, that's one possibility, or it moves to getting funding from somewhere else. And I think that is the more likely future for the BBC. Yeah. Not that they'll cut what they spend, but rather they'll use their name, their brand, to bring in alternate forms of funding and go on as before. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that when we look at the BBC, an institute that's been around for nearly 100 years, is something that obviously is recognised worldwide. But as the fact is, is that the model has changed. We've seen that more broadcasting companies can get to new audiences by on-demand services, a subscription service. Now, that's something that's very, very popular. And what seems to be uh, the case is that certainly uh, new audiences, young people are very much uh, sort of consuming content in that way. The BBC has made measures to do this. And what's interesting is many people are starting to challenge the quality of the BBC. We've seen in recent times on its journalism, the Martin Bashir saga, where unfortunately it was deemed that actually he, he misled, misled um, um, Princess Diana in the interview in the 90s. Now, of course, there are many other scandals that have unfolded. The BBC has admitted this. What's interesting is, is that the BBC Director General, Tim Davey, said, we will do everything to ensure the BBC continues to punch above its weight for Britain. But is that really the case? You know, we see that actually TV, in its traditional sense, viewers are dwindling. And more and more people are turning to new online measures to be able to consume content. So here's some thoughts. Clergyman Pete, is it possible that maybe actually the British government and maybe even the British people should sign up to the fact that we should now have a different charter? Maybe the idea of a franchise where essentially you invite um, organisations to bid for a licence fee. Mm. Now, we could say, for example, a 10-year licence fee where we have a certain policy, a criteria, and people bid for it. At the same yeah. time, mm. potentially sell off the BBC. Why not? It could yeah, become yeah. its own I... commercial entity. So here's some starting thoughts from a business perspective. Which, which appeals to you? Mm. Yes, I, I think, uh, well, selling off the BBC, uh, 
possible. Uh, it, it could be ha simply have a restructuring. Uh, so it's not sold off as such, but the current uh, management of it become uh, the uh, the owners of it. You know, they could, could form some sort of uh, collective ownership or it could be sold off. To uh, I think I, I don't think it's necessary to sell it to achieve uh, that end of it becoming separate from being um, a, a national public uh, broadcast service. Uh, then the, the Royal Charter is then the way that you become the Royal Broadcast Service, and that's just open uh, open to bids. Now, the problem would be, I would say, uh, that uh, allowing the BBC to bid. I would say, look, you've not been doing well enough, so you're not allowed to bid this time round. In 10 years' time, you can. So uh, th that's the way I would approach it. And if you were to uh, this year be able to move towards that, uh, model uh, going forward, then uh, other broadcast companies will have plenty of time to get ready. And I, I think the, the uh, there would be a net benefit. Everyone would benefit. The BBC uh, would uh, be freer to make money and to continue as it as it is if it wants to, or to get back into public broadcast service. Uh, only part of what it does needs to be the public broadcast part, I guess. Yeah. And the um, there are other. Uh, there are other um, organisations, broadcasters, that I'm sure would love to have that role within within the national life uh, because well, of the, the eyeballs. So that are, but you see, the thing is, in terms of broadcasting, uh, old-fashioned broadcasting, uh, you would have to change. The BBC wouldn't be able to keep all the frequencies that it now holds. Well, um, exactly. Yeah, but it but that's becoming less and less important, uh, uh, as you pointed out, as people move towards yeah. online consumption of of t television and on demand television. The BBC is doing very well. What I would say, you know, earlier I said uh, the BBC will find other funding. They already do. They already make a lot of money by selling their shows overseas, and you know they make money in other ways as already. And it's simply a question of increasing that. So I say. The, the belief that cutting the licence fee, well, it's been frozen at the moment, but that's effectively cutting it as it's for two years, uh, would mean, uh, would, would not necessarily mean that the BBC would have to cut its budget. It could make, it could, you know, shift to having more money from from sales of uh, of its uh, you know, its dramas and of its uh, documentaries, which are very popular around the world. Now, the way to do that uh, is to change the way they're doing it, which they could do, to change to make a, a more um, popular approach, I guess, to to their content, yeah. which they always used to do. I mean, now they, there's more, more of a narrow focus on um, even dramas having a political, a certain political element a certain cultural element to them uh which isn't so popular around the world but you know the bbc leadership obviously obviously find it important uh, but i think if they they could if they change to a more pop popular approach uh they could they could really mint it <laughs> i mean so i it's uh, it's not really the end of the bbc which uh, is our question to do with this episode is this the end of the bbc i know it's the end of the bbc but it could be the end of the bbc being the publish the public broadcast service. Well, the the question here would be for some looking at the counter argument would be the integrity of a national broadcast service. So, for example, if you were to open up a, a franchise or a license um, to those um, other broadcasters who are foreign based. So, for example, if it was um, another well-known entity from America that, for, for example, won the license fee, would people be comfortable with that? So I think really it's a, it's a case of trying to understand what that parameter might look like. I do think that the BBC is reaching a point where it has to make some critical decisions. What we're seeing is, is that we're seeing a dwindling service in one sense, in that the consumption of its products are not really being seen on a traditional TV as much. More people are consuming content by other means. So I think that maybe what needs to happen over the years to come is a some evaluation of what the BBC should be. Should it focus on pure broadcasting, which it has done traditionally very, very well, or should it go to a much more commercial operation, which has been debated for many, many times? You talked about having advertising in there. Some people felt that often 
that was the differential. You didn't have to wade through lots of advertising <laughs> or be subjected to it on the BBC. So um, I, I, I personally, this is just my take on it. I've always admired the BBC up until very recently because, you know, I've always felt that there was integrity in its journalism. That has lost its way. So certainly whatever it ha happens there, they need to reevaluate the way they structure their, their journalism. The content in terms of dramas and documentaries definitely stands up. Now, for those people who are um, have the fortune of being able to see other organizations broadcast in other countries, the BBC fares very, very well. Now, even though we might argue that actually some of the standards have slipped, I can assure you it definitely stands up very well on a global basis. But that doesn't matter. I mean, at the end of the day, what we still want to do is uphold standards. I would love to know what the public think about this. Yeah. Do they yeah, want to keep know. the BBC yeah. um, or maybe see a change? Yeah, let us know. Uh, put your thoughts in the comments. Uh, do you like our franchise approach to the future of public broadcast service or uh, is that a nonsense and the BBC should be reformed? Maybe heavily reformed, but reformed. Let us know. Well, that's it for Mark and Pete Live for this week. Join us again next time. Uh, bye for now. <laughs>